Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding dreams and visions. I'm Robin Harden, your host. What would you do if you had a vision of a prominent spiritual leader engaging in criminal activity? Well, my guest today, Ben Edwards, had such a vision. See how he handled it. Ben is also going to share some insight on what he calls the yeses, the noes, the stops and the goes in life. I'm here with my guest, Ben Edwards, and he's been hearing from the Lord for half of his life now. And something pretty fabulous has happened in his life over a course of years. So I want you to listen and see how the Lord speaks to us in themes and one dream builds on top of the other and sometimes with miraculous results. And so I would like for you to share with me, because I don't know, even know your story, yeah. when did you first realize that you were hearing from the Lord in dreams or visions? Well, actually, I first realized I was hearing from the Lord uh, when He first spoke to me when I was, I was probably 26 years old, so it's been 23 years ago. Wow. Uh, but uh, I had a, uh, a brother and a, his pastor that were praying that God would do whatever it took to reach me. and. Uh, I grew up in church, so I, I was very familiar with it. And if someone would have asked me if I was a Christian, I would have said, well, yeah, you know, I, I know God, but come to find out that, that I knew of God, but I did not know God. And there's a huge difference. I wasn't pursuing God. God was pursuing me. Amen. Yes. A and uh, so the Lord spoke to me so clearly on a lawnmower of all places one day. And, uh, and I ignored it the first time. And I didn't go but just a few feet further, and he spoke to me a second time. The second time that God spoke to my heart, it was just as if it was, people said, well, did you, was it audible? It was audible to me. Yes, you know, yes. I, Because I heard. Yes, you know, yes. I heard, and I felt God's hand come down and just grip my heart. And I had never really felt that before. And when it gripped my heart, instantly I began to cry uncontrollably, and that wasn't my nature. I mean, I was, I was a... You know, a power lifter in school. Right. I set all kinds of records. I had a football scholarship, went and played college football, and that wasn't typical of me. Mm -hmm. But yet, when when God reached down and got a hold of me, that it, it changed the course of my life because what He spoke to me, when He spoke it into my spirit, I done a I done a 180. I mean, it wasn't that I was necessarily a bad person, but I was a bad person because I was I was seeing nature right you know you're and, away from and, the lord <laughs> and so i cried out with a sincere heart mm -hmm. and i said and i'll never forget the words i said lord make me what you want me to be and when i relinquished my will mm -hmm. and i asked for his will my life totally changed and it was a matter of i want to say two to three days after that that i had my first dream that god give me a dream and, and God began to speak so vividly through these dreams. He called me into the ministry, and, and I began to, to study and just consume His Word and just eat it. And I mean, just it just became part of my everyday, just I had to have it. I had to have it more than natural food. And, uh, and it took me nine months, just as the gestation of a baby, uh -huh. it took me nine months seeking the Lord earnestly because I, the, the way I read it in the Bible, that the disciples said you shall receive power after that the holy spirit has come upon you and it wasn't i wasn't seeking it for the tongues or for the power or any of that i was seeking it to be a witness mm. i was seeking it to where i could i could do just exactly as the bible says it says you will be witnesses unto me and the way i read my bible that is the power that gives you that and 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 so I saw it in nine months, nine months after that is when the Lord baptized me, filled me with the Holy Ghost. And, and you know, what I had, was I saved at that point? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When I, that day on that lawnmower, when I acknowledged him, when, when I took his wheel on instead of mine, I was saved. Yes. I was saved and transformed right there. But yet I had a, I, I like to say I had a match, you know, I was a match and that match was struck and I was, there was a flame there, but 
when the baptism of the Holy Ghost come upon me and hit me and transform my life, I became a blowtorch. Wow. <laughs> you know, because wow, yes. because there is a there's a drastic difference. And you know, my my message is to to anyone I come in contact with is just keep seeking Him mm-hmm. because God will pour out everything on you that you ask and if you're wanting to receive he will give it because that's that's yeah. our god our god is a good god and he wants to give us these things and you know it's 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 a gift that he has for us to use to be that witness and and so as as far as when i first realized it it was a matter of two or three days after wow. i after i accepted him that he began to give me dreams and and show me things. So he knew you were going to accept them as being him, acknowledge that they were from him. And oh, absolutely. That's amazing because I find that people in church mm-hmm. are the hardest ones to, to convince that they need a savior because mm-hmm. they've been in church their whole life mm-hmm. and they just think, well, I go to church, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, especially in the South. Right. And, well, I, I was president of the FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, through school. I was, I was, I was the guy, you yeah. know, and I was the jock, the, a- the uh-huh. athlete, and uh-huh. you know, most athletic, and all of these things. And I was president of the FCA, and I would give, I would give talks on Christianity and things. <laughs> But yet, never, never yeah. really having a relationship yeah. because that was my understanding was, hey, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. more to being a Christian than saying I'm a Christian. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Going to church on <laughs> yeah, Sunday. Yeah. It, it's wow. a relationship. It's wow. that communion. It's that that closeness that God desires us to have. I think what's beautiful is that at the age of 22, you knew what your calling was, because countless people have sat in this chair and have told me much older than me, which is much older than you, mm-hmm. that they don't know what their calling is yet. And, mm-hmm. and I know he's told them, and I know it's there, and it, they just haven't tapped into it or recognized it, but for you to recognize it like that. Yeah. I, I, think it, I think it's an unfolding, it's, it's an unfolding sure. thing, because when, when the Lord first called me to the ministry, the very words, and I haven't shared, I don't, things I don't share, but I haven't shared it with a lot of people. But the fact is, He's, the words he spoke to my spirit were stir up the churches. He called me to be an evangelist mm-hmm. and to stir up the churches. And, you know, as a, as a Christian, I believe that that is what we are to do. We are to stir up. The Bible says stir up that gift that is within you. Mm-hmm. And we're to stir up the body of Christ to, to, to get out and to utilize the giftings and callings that God has put within us because for, for years people have suppressed that and they feel like it's insignificant. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you what God puts in us is very significant Mm -hmm. because I I, I sing and and through my ministry through the last 20 plus years, uh, I've sang a lot, but there's one song, it's an old song and it rings loud in my ear. And it's if just one more soul, you know, were to walk down the aisle, it would Mm -hmm. be worth every struggle, Mm -hmm. worth every mile. And you know, that's my true heart, you know, because how do, how do you reach the world? You reach them one soul at a time. Yeah. You know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the task of reaching millions of people yeah. starts with one person. One at a time. You, know? you can tell me if you remember the first thing you had, because that's it. We've already started. With, that's a cool oh, absolutely. story. You I, I, remember I, the first one? Oh, I, oh wow. I, I, remember, I remember it to the T. Um, just two or three days after that I'd surrendered my life to the, the Lord, the I had a farm and I had a big shop on that farm and um, I was asleep of course at night and I dreamed I was standing at the back on the outside of that shop and there was a little stoop on the front that went into the shop and I remember I looked up there was a water hydrant and I was watering some flowers and stuff standing there my wife had some flowers out behind the shop and I looked up and I seen this figure this man I mean I could tell it was a man and it was standing on the stoop at my shop like he was just standing there getting ready to go in the door and i look up and this this man he had a there was a robe on that he had and it was a white robe and uh and i look up and i didn't say it out loud but i thought it in my mind i thought man this, who is this you know what are they doing dressed like this you know this <laughs> this guy's at the wrong place <laughs> but as i looked up and I was looking at him. He he looked up at me, and people people have asked me when I've told him this. Well, what he looked like? Well, I I don't know. All yeah. I know it was a man. Yeah. And I don't. I didn't really. You know, I didn't know that that was unimportant at the time. Mm-hmm. And what I do know is, is I said, 
who are you? And he and as the man looked at me, I just instantly I, I didn't say anything, but my hands just come up like this. And I said, Who are you? And as my hands were still in this position, it was like he was made of rubber or something because his hands reached the whole length of that shop building on the outside. And he said, come and sup with me. You know the meaning. And when he said, you know the meaning, his hands touched my hands. And I woke up. And when I woke up, I was crying uncontrollably in my bed. And I woke my wife up. And I said, we need to find a church. Wow. And, 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 and not, because, not because that salvation is in the church. Right. Salvation is in him. But yet... Every believer needs that foundation and needs to get rooted and grounded and have that, you know, and, and, uh, but that was the very first dream that I had was right after the salvation that the Lord come to me directly and let me know that I needed to find a church to where I could get rooted and grounded and grow. And, <laughs> That's amazing. Now, many of you have walked with the Lord a long time and maybe you're having dreams and you don't know they're from him. And it's amazing that Jesus showed himself to Ben at his very first dream. You may go your whole life and not see Jesus in a dream or a vision, but he is still talking to you. We're going to uh, hear more from Ben in just a moment. Walking, talking, debating, and arguing with God is a lighthearted collection of short stories depicting some of Robin's real-life experiences and testimonies. You'll laugh and cry as Robin shares her plight of being the new kid year after year. Take a trip along Robin's spiritual journey, which she describes as straight and narrow and straight up the side of a mountain. When you start seeing things in a different view, it doesn't look bad. It looks promising. Because remember, old things pass away. Behold, all things are new. Well, I heard a message, uh, I believe it was two or three days ago, and, and I heard a recording of it uh, this week. And it said, it's a setup for the new norm. And I thought about that. What's normal? I don't even know what that is anymore. Because normal is this for me now, in God. My normal wants to be in God. Whatever God's doing, wherever God's going, whatever God's saying, whatever God wants done, whatever God tells me to say, whatever God tells me not to say, when God says sit down, I want to sit down. When He says stand up, I want to stand up. I want to walk and operate in His normal, which usually is outside of our normal. Get ready for your normal to change. Catch your dream. God has always given his people a dream. Didn't he do it for Abraham? <laughs> you know what he did for Abraham? He started planting a seed in his heart. It's a dream. He said, come here, Abraham, get out of that tent. That tent's blocking your vision. Get out of that tent. And so he got him outside. He said, look into the heavens. Look up there. What do you see? Count the stars if you can. Lord, that's a lot. I don't even have a child. Yep, keep looking. Focus on the dream that I have for you. Join Pastor Johan at Love's Way Church Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. The Lord woke me up in the middle of the night with a dream and I seen this man and I seen a drug deal in an airplane hangar and I called this man. It was probably, I don't know, 
six o'clock in the morning, but I, uh, when I called him, but I called him and woke him up, and I let him know. I said, "I'm praying for you." I said, and I shared with him that what God had shown me, and I said, you know, I said, you know, I saw you in this airplane hangar. I seen this drug deal, and I seen this, and I started describing it. And this guy on the other end of the line, he said, "Who have you been talking to? What, you know?" And and but I do know this. I do know that the man came back to God, and but God used that to show His love. You could have talked. You could have gossiped. Oh, yeah. You could have, you yeah. know, and no. which would have put a defense up in this man's life, mm -hmm. and he probably would not be serving the Lord now. Right. But because you went to Him in love. Mm -hmm. And there's no way you could have known that. Oh, no. I mean, the no. Lord showed you that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he loved, like you said, he loved him enough to reach out and, and, and help him to get oh, him out absolutely. of this. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's a scripture that says, Though there be 10,000 instructors in Christ, there are yet not many fathers. Yeah. You know, God is never here to tear down. No. You know, he's not here to tear down. He's here just as with that man I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. That wasn't to tear him down. Mm -hmm. That was to show him the love that God mm -hmm. has. It's outreaching mm -hmm. to him. And now that, that critical eye that I used to have, you know, yeah. when, when I first was saved and I would look and see other Christians mm -hmm. and living things that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see. But God, I, I don't even see that anymore. Mm -hmm. All I mm -hmm. see, I see a soul. Yeah. When someone really, really gets under our skin, and like I said, I'm still human. There's people mm -hmm. that annoy me, yeah. you know. And uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time, are you willing to die for that person? Yeah. I will just say I'm not Jesus. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, That's but good. I, at the same time, I do find it when people do mistreat you and things that. Uh, that you know, God doesn't allow that to happen for no reason. Right. And right. Uh, you know, I, I believe nothing just happens in this life. I agree. And I believe that there's good. God will take what the enemy meant for evil and mm -hmm. turn it for good every mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. if we will allow it. Yes. You know, if we act, if we act upon, you know, you don't you don't repay evil with evil. Right. You know, right. and all you do, all you can do is sh show people the love of Christ mm -hmm. and the love of God and what He done for them, and let them see that through you. Yeah. Yeah, and I find that as you mature in Christ and you realize, because you, know, you know, early we were talking, you were in church, mm -hmm. so you think, well, I'm, I'm a good person. As you mature, you realize the things He has given you mercy over and forgiven you for, mm -hmm. and, and how can I hold such and such against this person mm -hmm. when He's done all this for me? That's right. And of course, our sins are never as bad as someone else's. You know, it's like, <laughs> I've never killed someone, or I've never done drugs, or, but, you know, maybe I gossiped, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, we are the ones who put these different levels on sin, but God mm -hmm. just, God puts liar right in there with murderers that's in right. his word. That's right. And you know, that's, a, that's one thing I, I've, I've asked people in, in, in presenting the gospel a lot of times, uh, especially with uh, young people, college level people, mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is I'll ask a kind of a series of questions sometimes, you know, well, you know, have you ever told a lie or uh -huh. you? You know, and, and all these things, and and if they're honest, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. if they're honest, they'll say, well, yes, I have, because yeah, sure. you know, and and you know, and if God judges you by what you've said, you know, do you think you're going to be a good, you know, good or bad? And and of course, the the answer is always, well, bad, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. because you know, and so and I and I, and I'll say, well, yes, you know, me too. I, we all fall into yeah. that category. Yeah, I said, but you know, that's the whole reason that that. God sent His Son, and He died for us to take to take our place. You know, to, to pay that fine so that we could we could have life, and the judge could release us. You know, yeah, and yeah. and uh, you know, we're not to continue down that path. We're to allow Him to transform us. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it's a choice that we make to forgive and to get rid of that critical spirit. And I believe that critical spirit is something that many many believers suffer with because we read the word and we know what is supposed to happen and then you see that it's not happening but I want to encourage you that the Lord can help you with that you can't do it yourself your flesh but cry out to him in private and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to look past 
what you think is sin in someone else's life. And it just makes your life so much more pleasant. <laughs> you know, when you're the Holy Spirit for everyone else, that's a big job. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's just nice to go, whew, God, they're your kids. You deal That's with right. them. As, as I said, we're, our, our job is to smite the water. Yeah, His I love that. His job is to do the miraculous. Mm -hmm. and, I love you know, that. That's, that's uh, you know, God, you know, God, God gave me a saying years ago, and my kids, they'd just throw their hands up, you know, when it didn't go their way. And, of course, my kids are all grown now. But, but I said, you know, I've, I've learned to take the yeses and the noes and the stops and the goes. And I've learned to take them and accept them as God's will. Because, you know, God knows better than I do what I need, and He knows yes. better than I do the paths that I need to take. So when God, you know, the Bible says that He will open a door that no man will shut, you know, yeah. and, and He'll shut one that no man no can, can open. open. <laughs> and, yeah. and so, you know, I've learned to take the stops and the goes and the yeses and the noes, and I've learned to take them with a smile. I've learned to take my house burning down with a smile because, you know, not that, you know, not that I enjoyed, you know, there were some things that we lost that we could never get back. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, we're still here. Yeah. And your you family's know, safe. Yep, that's yeah. right. So, you know, and, you know, things that we lost, all of those, all that stuff's temporal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there, you know, as far as, yes, yes, God's concerned with those things, but God's more concerned, and I'm more focused on those things or on Him. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, I had a dream one night, and there was, um, there was, there was four snakes in this dream, and, and I, I killed two of these snakes, and uh, the other two went around the corner of the house, and I, I went around, instead of just letting them run off, I went around chasing after them, and I went around chasing after them, and I, I killed the one, and then I, I killed the other one, and about that time, there was like a big gutter there that come down, and it was like a, uh, in, in what I first thought, I thought it was like an alligator, it was just, this thing just popped up and took off down to this lake and went into this lake. Well, instead of just leaving it alone, I chased after it. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> and, but I chased after it because that's just my mentality. Yeah, that's what yeah. God, you know, we're all made different, but that's my but mentality. But no, you're a warrior, yeah. And so I chased after it, and I ran in, and I hollered. I said, bring me a gun. And I'll never forget this because God made it so clear, and it's so, it's so true, and I've never shared this with anyone, but it's so true with what actually happened because... My daughter, this this little girl, it was it was a little girl in the dream, but it was my daughter. She ran, she ran me a, a twenty gauge shotgun. I looked down and it was it was yellow shells, which is a twenty, and that was in my mind. I said, "Well, what'd she bring me a twenty gauge for?" Uh -huh. But I looked and it was this huge anaconda. It was like a huge anaconda, a big big snake. I don't know yeah. if it was anaconda, but yeah. it was a huge big snake. And it swam, it swam right in front of me, and I shot it, and it just exploded, and I woke up. And when I woke up, the Lord said, since you have proven yourself, it was after the, after oh, the yes. but he said, since you have proven yourself, the door that I'm going to open for you in 2020, 20-gauge 20 shotgun, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm going to open this door in 2020 so that you can step into the destiny that I've had for you because you have not ran from the mm -hmm. enemy, but you've ran toward him yes. to do warfare with him, yes. that I'm going to open that door for you. And, and God's word is true. His, yes. his word is sure. You know? Most of us would maybe fight the snake or whatever it is while it's on our yard. You know, like right now I'm dealing with whatever. And I, and I fight it. But once the devil le leaves me alone for a little bit, we take a breath and we get, <laughs> oh, that's over. It's not over. No. Because unless, until we deal with whatever that is, mm -hmm. whether it's generational, you know, whatever it is, until we deal with it, it's going to come back. That's right. And you, you right. dealt with it. That's right. You know, just as, just as a message we just recently heard here in our, here in our church that, uh, you know, the, where that Elijah told the king to strike the ground with the arrows, and he only struck him three times. And he said, "If you'd have struck it five or six times, yeah. you know that that relates right back to what we were mm -hmm. talking about. You mm -hmm. know, is uh, so many times we want to just take care of the right now, yeah. and we don't think about yeah. you know ahead yeah. and what God is telling us. If we'll if we'll kill it at the root yeah. right now, we don't yeah. have to worry about it down the road." 
<laughs> and even in your dream, it was the little ones you killed right away. Mm -hmm. And most people, if it was real life, would not have chased that thing because it left. Mm -hmm. And they would have been, okay, well, I killed these four little ones. Mm -hmm knowing full where the big one is still there <laughs> yeah. and can come back. <laughs> that's right. And that's what he wants for us. That's taking the kingdom by force. That's right. That's, that's right. to me, that's what that's. And I truly is. believe God has put into my spirit is God is calling forth the spirit of John the Baptist to rise up because John the Baptist is what brought Jesus. Right. And I believe the spirit of John the Baptist, if it will rise up in the church, that's what's going to bring Jesus mm, back that's again. <laughs> you know, the, that's good. And, and, uh, and that's what God's calling us to. You know, the, you know, the, the God of Elijah is, is alive and well mm -hmm. and ready to, ready yeah. to show himself mighty. And waiting on will. us. So many people say, I'm waiting on the Lord. And <laughs> I've gotten to where I don't even want to hear that yeah. because... He's waiting, he's waiting on us. That's right. He's waiting on us. <laughs> he's already right. told us. Yeah. And he's just waiting on us. That's right. Regardless of where we are in our life. That's right. He's waiting right. for us. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This has been so good. This is... You know, any avenue or opportunity that God ever presents to, to anyone, to anyone watching, you know, take that opportunity, mm -hmm. use it, because you never know, you know, who's to say that you have not come into the kingdom for such a time as this, that this is the destiny and plan that God has before you. And, and God will take that and use that and honor that. If your heart is pure toward Him and, and you, you're, you want His will and not your will, God will use that to do things that will just blow your mind. And I just, you know, I just want... Uh, that's all I want. I want to reach people that, not that they will know me. I don't care if they even know my name, mm -hmm. but I want them to say, wow, you know, that is God. I was flipping through the dream journal. Oh! And um, in the back, you had a symbol listed of unfinished areas. And that leapt off of the page at me. Areas the Lord is still perfecting. That's the definition you have of unkept areas. And I just thought, yes, that is, that is how I feel about life in general. If you watch the program, you know how important it is to record your dreams. Dream Catcher Journal with over 50 scriptures, words of prophecy and revelation, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. There's a quick reference to help you with colors and their meanings. Over 90 different scriptures that show you symbols that are in the Bible. If water is the Holy Spirit in the Bible, water is probably the Holy Spirit in your dream. There's 195 symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to understand what it is the Lord is saying to you. Order your dream catcher journal today. Remember, you're only responsible for what the Lord instructs you to do. If you share the Word of God with someone and they reject it, that's between that person and the Lord. But if you pray for someone who receives healing, you don't get to take the credit either. Ask yourself, what kind of flame are you carrying for the Lord? Is it a matchstick or a blowtorch? Catch us here next time on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams. Mm -hmm.